Hello and welcome to another episode of my Productivity Mastery Series. My name is Carl Pauline and today we're looking at the tyranny of projects. Now, I've been coaching people for the last five or six years in time management and productivity. I've also read and reread David Allen's book, Getting Things Done. I've spent the last probably eight to 10 years thinking in terms that anything that's a multi-step task is actually a project. And years ago, I used to manage all my tasks by the projects. And I probably had about 30 or 40 projects down the left-hand side of my task manager. Now, many years ago, I realized that this was a very inefficient way of working because when you've got 30 or 40 projects in the sidebar of your task manager, then you've got a hell of a lot of places to go looking for when you're doing your weekly planning session or weekly review. I mean, my weekly reviews used to take about two hours and I don't ever feel that I did an adequate planning weekly review when that was happening. Now, a number of years ago, I realized that projects was a terrible idea. Projects were a terrible way of organizing my tasks because simply there were just too many projects and there wasn't enough time in the week in order to work on all of them. I came up with a different system. I'm not going to go into that today. But what I did realize was the most important thing was not projects. Projects will always slow you down because projects by their very nature are unique. They require a lot of planning, a lot of thinking, and there's no way that you've got a trigger to really get you started and move a project forward. There are times when you will have a project. And let me just give you one simple example. If you decided that you wanted to begin a podcast. Now, there's a lot of research and it's something you've probably never looked into before. So beginning a project, the project would be start podcast or create a podcast. There's a lot of unique tasks involved in setting that up. You need to find a host for where you're going to put the podcast. You probably need to think about what am I going to talk about and whether I'm going to have guests. There's a lot of planning involved. But once you've done that, once you've got the podcast set up, once you've actually got the platform, if you were to treat each individual podcast that you create as a project, then you are creating for yourself a lot of additional work. A better way to treat each individual podcast is to get the process, figure out the process. Now, I've been doing a podcast since 2017 and I now have a beautiful, I love my process. Every Tuesday morning, I sit down for two hours or about 90 minutes and write the script. Every Sunday afternoon, I will go into my studio and I will record the podcast. The script is there and all I need to do is turn on my computer, load up my uh, garage band I use, which is Apple's uh, audio software. I've got my microphone in there and I just do the podcast. Once that's done, I bring over the, the file, I organize it and I post it to my platform. In total, I spend probably no more than about two and a half hours preparing a podcast each week. It's simple. I've been working this process for the last four or five years and it just works. And it also, because it's part of a process, I don't procrastinate. I just, oh, it's Sunday afternoon. Let's go and record the podcast. There's no, oh, what should I do next? I have a process for doing my podcast. Now, before we go into this a little bit further, I have a brief message from this week's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. With thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics including illustration, design, photography, productivity, freelancing and more. Skillshare has classes to fit your schedule and skill level and members get unlimited access to thousands of inspiring classes with hands-on projects and feedback from a community of millions. For example, this course on essentialism by Greg McEwen is fantastic. It has helped me to identify what is important to me so I can focus my time and energy on the essential things in my life. 
If you're looking for the perfect place to ignite your creativity and learning, then give Skillshare a try. The first 1,000 people to use the link or my code, Carl Pauline, will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Well, thank you very much, Skillshare, for sponsoring this video. And I should point out that Skillshare is my favorite learning platform because this is where I will always go if I want to learn something new or to try and find something out. I love learning and Skillshare is my favorite platform to go to and just learn something. Okay, let's move on into why projects don't work and instead you want to be looking for the processes. I want to give you an example, a bigger example than creating a podcast. Imagine Toyota decides that they're going to build an absolutely brand new car and because of the nature of this car they're going to have to build a new factory in order to produce this car. Now building the factory is going to be the project because it's unique. It's not something they do every day or every year. Building a new factory might be something they do every 5, 10, 20 years. So that is a project because it's not something that they have a blueprint for. Maybe they have an idea, but they don't have a blueprint for or a set of tasks that they would need to do. Again, they might have an idea, but it's big involved. It's a unique thing with a given specific outcome. Producing the cars, however, that is a process. It's not a project. Each car, if they treated each car as a project, it would be massively inefficient. Toyota are looking at making their systems and their processes incredibly efficient. And the only way you're going to do that is by developing processes. So you get the raw material being delivered to the factory. Whatever goes on with the robots and everything inside the factory and out comes the cars. It doesn't matter if a car is going to be red or blue or green or white or black. It doesn't matter if they have different interiors because they will have a process for making those cars and that way they can target things as well. For example, we are going to produce 150 cars a day. What do we need to do? They can refine their processes, make it faster, make it more efficient. And that's what you want to be doing. There's a lot of talk about, you know, if you think about the work that you do every day, most of us are doing similar work each day. I create content each week. I have a process for creating my blog posts. I have a process for doing my podcast, for doing these videos. I have a process for everything. Now, some things I need a checklist. Other things like writing a blog post, I don't need a checklist. It's three or four steps in order to get a post, a blog post published every Wednesday. I write newsletters for my learning center and for the people who want to follow me. And again, each one of those has a process. The beauty of developing processes for doing your work is it really reduces the opportunity of procrastination because I know how to start writing a blog post. I know how to start creating these videos. And like most things in terms of procrastination, once you get started, you get done because I know how to do it. It's almost, in fact, doing these videos is automatic. I know exactly what I need to do. So what you want to be doing is rather than managing or treating everything as a project, look for the processes. It's the process that's going to make you more efficient, more effective, and it gives you data points that you can improve on and make faster and easier and smoother. And this means that you don't have to have hundreds of projects in your task manager. You can just create, like I, I always, I advocate the time sector system, but I know that if you are a content creator, there's another way I could organize it. I could put my blog, podcast, YouTube videos, courses, and I would have my processes in there. All I would need to do is create a date for when I'm starting the next pro process. So for example, every Monday, I would have a task that comes up that says, write blog post. And in my calendar, I have a block of time for writing. So it's easy, no procrastination, bang, straight, get into it. So I urge you over the next few days is, have a think about the work that you're doing. Think about 
Are there some common steps, some commonalities that I can turn into a process so I don't have to think every time about what needs to happen, what's the outcome, what's the deadline. Just following a process will automatically get you there. And it's a lot easier than having hundreds of projects to actually review each week. And one final thing. Many years ago, I used to work in a law firm and it would have been very easy to treat each case as a unique project because each case had a unique client. Each case had a unique property. We were buying and selling properties, so each client, had, you know, we had different lawyers that we were working with. But essentially, when I was working there, what blew me away was there was a process. You know, we got the instructions from our client, we inputted the details into the system, we collected the data, any problems were dealt with by the lawyer, and then, then it was we moved to completion and we set the completion date and everyone was happy. It was a process. We never ever treated it as a project because the outcome was common, the outcome was clear. We needed to take this new client from opening up the, the, the case and moving it to completion as quickly as possible possible. We had a process for doing that. We didn't treat each new case as a project. And there was a time when I was learning to become a lawyer where I spent a week with a barrister in a courtroom. And in the UK, a barrister is those people who wears the gowns and the wigs. And I was watching the, law, the barrister working and every morning before court, he had a process. He followed a process each day. And I thought, then I thought, wow, this is a lot easier than I imagined. I was thinking everything had to be done uniquely and it was going to be set out differently. But no, each case he treated the same way and he followed the same process whenever he was in court. So look for the processes. Processes can be refined. Processes can be made more efficient. And eventually over time, processes can be reduced down to time. You will become much more efficient at doing your work and I'm sure that you will find yourself a lot less overwhelmed, swamped, and just anxious about everything that's going on. Find the process. Well, thank you so much for watching this video, and it just remains for me now to wish you all a very, very productive week. Hello, thank you very much for watching my videos. Now, I have something exciting to tell you about. Recently, I have developed a brand new time management system. It's a system designed to manage your time in the 21st century. The world has changed a lot over the last 20 years. In fact, it's actually changed a lot this year. And what we need now is a system, a time management system that is very easy to use, easy to maintain, so that you can spend more of your time doing the work. And that's what the time sector system is all about. It's going to change your whole belief system about way the way a time management system should work because this focuses on when, when you are going to do the task. And let's be honest, it doesn't matter how motivated, inspired or how urgent something is. If you don't have time to do it, it is never going to get done. And that's what this system is built around, getting your work done so you can spend more of your time doing the things that you want to do. I hope you join me in this course. The full details of the course are in the show notes below. So please join me and thank you very much for watching this brief video.